Hello, this is Audrey with Klein Instruments, and welcome to our advanced calibration video for Chromaser. First of all, let me just say it's not as terrifying as it sounds. Calibration is a complex process, but it can be broken down into a simplified workflow once you understand the basics. Once you're done, you will understand how and why we calibrate our displays. In this video, we will cover the basic terms and concepts you will need in display calibration. We will start with color science in the human eye. Next, we will transition to how the visual spectrum that we see relates to our CIE graph. Then we'll talk about gamut, gamma, and finally how all of this fits into the calibration process as seen in our white point calibration video. Light, or electromagnetic radiation, can be shown as a wave. Different types of light have different wavelengths that make up the electromagnetic spectrum. The wavelengths that we can detect with our eyes make up a tiny segment that we call the visual spectrum. We detect this light with special cells in the retina of our eyes called rods and cones. Rods are more sensitive but do not detect color. The cones are more concentrated in the fovea, an area in the center of the retina. These cells deliver color information to our brain. There are three types of cones, red, green, and blue sensitive cones. Red cones obviously detect the red wavelengths of light. Green cones detect the green wavelengths, and blue cones detect the blue wavelengths. These graphs show the sensitivity to light on the visual spectrum. We label these sensitivity curves X, Y, and Z. RGB equals X, Y, and Z. Green or Y is the most sensitive to light intensity. This will be important later in calibration. As we know, the human eye isn't sensitive to individual wavelengths, but groups of wavelengths. As a result, we see a rainbow of colors. A color emitter detects light in a similar way using three diodes. Now, let's say we have incoming light that looks like this. Our red cones are going to be sensitive to the wavelength shown by this curve. So the light detected by the red cones should look something like this. The green cones will see this, and the blue cones will see this. Now let's sum up the area under each of the three curves. Let's say we get a number like 30. The green graph is 30 as well, and the red graph sum is 40. The total of these is 100. So now we can look at the proportion of each value to the total. For the red value, we get 0.4. For green, it's 0.3. And for blue, it's 0.3. We'll call these our little x, little y, and little z. Later on, these values will help make up the CIE curve. All of these will add up to 1. Because we know this, we don't really need our little z value because we have the other two values, and they all must equal 1. So now we have a little x and little y. And if you remember, we have a big y value that is our integrated weighted intensity from the green curve. Look familiar? These are the values that we look at when we are calibrating. This leads us to our next concept, the CIE graph. Since we have an X and a Y value, we can graph each wavelength's individual X and Y value like coordinates. If we connect the dots, so to speak, we end up with what you will recognize as the 1931 CIE graph. All of the colors that the human eye can see are within this chart. This leads us into our second point to cover, gamut. Now if we look at red for example, the color is going to be fully saturated right here along the edge. It will become less saturated as you move towards the middle of the graph. White is in the middle where there are equal values of red, green, and blue, as red, green, and blue wavelengths create white light. Now really, only a laser can produce colors this saturated. In practice, most displays will have their RGB values at a less saturated value. This triangle is called the gamut and contains all the color that the display can produce. The monitor obviously cannot produce colors outside of its native gamut. There are also many gamut settings, like Rec. 709 and NTSC, just to name a few. Let's wrap up our summary of gamut here and move on to gamma. Gamma is another term you will need to understand in the world of calibration. While gamut deals with the breadth of color space, gamma deals with the grayscale or brightness range. The human eye can be referred to as having logarithmic response. Our vision is more sensitive to small brightness changes at low brightness. To reflect this, the display is designed to give small brightness steps at low brightness levels, and the incremental steps become larger as the brightness increases. Now as you may know, in terms of display colors, there are usually only 255 steps. Let's say we have a gamma of 1. Our graph would show a straight line. The gamma is really just this value right here. 
n to the gamma. But if we used a gamma of 1, we would be wasting some of those 255 steps on differences in intensity that are barely perceptible to the human eye. Here is an example of an image with a gamma of 1. Throwing a gamma curve on our display allows us to have evenly perceived steps in intensity. To accomplish this, our curve must be more parabolic in shape. A gamma value you may be familiar with is 2.2, as it is very prevalent in the US. This graph is nearly parabolic and reflects our vision much better than our gamma of 1. Having too aggressive of a gamma curve will result in an almost posterized looking image. This is because all of the high end and low end steps are not noticeably different. In extreme cases, all of our nice 255 steps snap to black or white. So now to our final part of this video. How does all of this relate to calibration? We know that our display has a native gamut and a gamma value. We can set both of these values as we calibrate in Comaserve. We set a target in the settings panel and then go through the calibration process to set the display to the desired settings. Now remember, every display will have a native gamut and it can only produce colors within that gamut. Calibration is necessary because displays drift over time and eventually colors will not be true to the gamma and gamut they should have. At the end of the day, what we're really doing with calibration is repairing this drift and setting our monitors to a specific standard. That way if all of our monitors are calibrated to the same settings, they will display the same image. Drift isn't the only factor though. Monitors will often need to be calibrated right out of the box to correct any flashy showroom settings the manufacturers may have loaded up. Calibration usually starts with calibrating two points on the gamma curve, 80 and 30 IRE. IRE is simply a scale that takes our familiar zero to 255 range and displays it as zero to 100%. And we said in our white point calibration video, 80 IRE is often called contrast or gain. 30 IRE is often called brightness or offset. To show what we're doing during calibration, let's look at our gamma as it is read by a colorimeter. Let's say we're measuring white at 80 IRE. That's this part of the gamma curve. What our colorimeter is actually reading is the three red, green, and blue curves. And when we zoom in, we can clearly see that they are not in alignment. To have our white point set in the middle of our gamut, we need to have all three of these channels aligned properly. The easiest way to see this is to look at our RGB bars and just like we did in the white point calibration video, align the bars. The result of this will be that the three curves are aligned at 80 IRE. However, this says nothing for the rest of the gamma. If we calibrate at 30 IRE as well, then our curves are starting to align to our target gamma better. From this point, it should be clear what a 10 point IRE adjustment does. You simply go through in 10 point IRE increments and align the curves for a very precise gamma. Once this is done, you can rest assured that our white point is in the center of your gamma. So everything we've talked about so far is modifying our white point. But what if drift causes our red, green, and blue values of our gamut to be out of alignment? This is where calibrating our RGB primaries comes in. This is a relatively simple calibration in which we calibrate red, green, and blue channels for each of the three points on the gamut. We do this just like we did for the white point, but we generally do not have to calibrate at multiple points like we did with grayscale. Now we have covered all of our major topics, from how the human eye detects light with RGB cones to how a colorimeter calibrates monitors with RGB diodes. Hopefully you can walk away from this video with a new understanding of color, science, and calibration. Thanks for watching!